Le Moustier, a rock shelter in the Dordogne region of France, yielded a young Neanderthal male known as Le Moustier I. Though the skeleton was damaged and altered during early excavations in World War II, it remains crucial for understanding Neanderthal adolescence and development. The site lent its name to the Mousterian tool culture, a widespread Neanderthal tradition of flake tools made using the Levallois technique. Mousterian tools found across all these sites speak to a shared technological foundation that persisted for tens of thousands of years. These tools were effective, efficient and regionally adapted, evidence of planning, skill and deep environmental knowledge. The Moustier Neanderthals are the silent namesakes of an entire Paleolithic world. They lived during a cold, perilous age, hunted and made complex tools, and may have even buried their young. Though the fossil itself was ravaged by time and war, the knowledge it gave us helped define what it meant to be a Neanderthal, not just in bones and tools, but in thought and culture. The original report on the discovery written in 1909 referred to this population as Mousterians, so we will use that term in this video so as not to stereotype Neanderthals as a single monolithic group. Nestled in the Vézer Valley of the Dordogne region of southwestern France, Le Moustier is one of the most historically and scientifically significant Neanderthal sites in Europe. Its very name became synonymous with the Mousterian stone tool industry, a middle Paleolithic technological tradition stretching across much of Ice Age Europe. But Le Moustier is more than a typological benchmark. It is a deeply informative archaeological site that has yielded a remarkably well-preserved Moustarian skull, grave goods, and tool assemblages that continue to challenge and expand our understanding of Moustarian cognitive abilities, cultural behavior, and even symbolic expression. This video explores the history of the Le Moustier site, the fate and interpretation of the famous Moustier skull, the evidence of burial at the site, and the variety and craftsmanship of Mousterian tools found there. Together, these elements reveal a portrait of Mousterian life that is far more complex and nuanced than the brutish stereotype long perpetuated by 19th and early 20th century anthropology. Le Mouiste I, dated to 45,000 years ago, is the skull of an adolescent Mousterian, approximately 15 years old at the time of death, most likely male, with a cranial capacity ranging from 1500 to 1565 cubic centimeters. The skull, believed to have been destroyed during World War II, was rediscovered in 1965. The remaining bones of the nearly complete skeleton were destroyed during a bombing raid in the latter part of World War II. At the start of World War II, the skull from Le Moustier was safely stored. After the war, the skulls were taken to the Soviet Union and returned to Germany in 1958, along with many other items. Importantly, almost the entire skull was able to be reconstructed, and at the time of the skeleton's discovery, the arrangement of the bones revealed for the first time that the Mousterians had buried their dead. The body was placed on its right side, with the head on a flat rock and stone tools placed nearby, which mirrors Mousterian burials in other parts of the world. After its discovery, the skull was disassembled, cast and reconstructed at least four times. During this process, the skull sustained significant damage. For example, after being sold to the Ethnological Museum of Berlin, a dentist broke the alveolar bone to access the teeth. It was later damaged during the Allied bombing of Berlin during World War II, and then looted by the Soviet Union which returned the skull's remains to the German Democratic Republic in 1958. The skull is now missing many parts, with the teeth glued in the incorrect position, and has been dipped in glue, varnished and painted with plaster. As a result, its scientific value is significantly reduced. Le Moustier's significance emerged in the mid-19th century when geologists and early archaeologists emboldened by the discoveries at Neanderthal Valley and other European cave sites, began systematically excavating rock shelters in the Dordogne region. In 1908, the site gained worldwide fame with the discovery of a skeleton, later known as the Moustier I specimen, by Edouard Larté and Henry Christie. This nearly complete adolescent male Moustarian cranium 
was recovered from a layer dated to around 45,000 years ago and remains one of the best-preserved Mousterian skulls ever found. Incredibly, the Germans paid 160,000 gold marks for the skeleton, outbidding some Americans for the skeleton. Adjusted for inflation, that is, in the ballpark of one million American dollars today. Despite the scientific importance of the find, the skull's fate took a tragic turn. It was sent to Berlin in the 20th century for further study, but during World War II the city was heavily bombed, and the cranium was partially destroyed. Later attempts to piece it back together led to accusations of over-restoration and distortion. Despite this damage, however, Moustier I has remained a key fossil in studies of Mousterian cranial morphology. The skull shows a low, elongated brain case, prominent brow ridges, and a projecting mid-face, all typical Mousterian traits. Yet its more gracile build, owing to the adolescent age of the individual, also reminds us of the developmental spectrum and variability within the Neanderthal species. Later excavations at Le Moustier yielded a second Mousterian skeleton, Moustier II, the remains of a neonate buried in a shallow pit. This second find, far less publicized than the first, was crucial in providing evidence for Mousterian burial practices, suggesting that even infants were afforded intentional deposition, a behavior resonant with symbolic thought and social cohesion. The burial of Moustier offers some of the clearest early evidence of Mousterian funerary behavior. The skeleton was found in a flexed position, buried in a small, scoop-shaped depression carved into the cave floor. Though no elaborate grave goods were recovered alongside the body, the intentional nature of the burial has not been seriously questioned by modern archaeologists. Importantly, the burial occurred in a period before the widespread presence of Homo sapiens in Western Europe, suggesting that this was an indigenous, Mousterian cultural practice, rather than one learned from anatomically modern humans. The act of burying the dead implies a concept of death beyond mere disposal a recognition of personhood or social role, and perhaps even a rudimentary belief in an afterlife or spiritual existence, while some skeptics have pointed out the lack of ornamentation or grave offerings in Moustier's burial, others note that the mere act of creating a grave speaks to a deep emotional or symbolic motivation. This is especially notable when contextualized with other Moustierian burials, such as those at La Chapelle aux Saints, Chanidar, and La Ferrassie, which also showed deliberate placement of bodies, often in flexed positions and in some cases with accompanying items or floral remains. Le Moustier is the type site of the Mousterian tool industry, a flake-based technology associated almost exclusively with Neanderthals in Europe and parts of Western Asia. The site has yielded a wealth of tools that showcase the technical sophistication of these early humans. The Mousterian toolkit found at Le Moustier includes side scrapers, denticulates, notches, and points, many of which were produced using the Levallois technique. This technique involves preparing a stone core so that a single blow would detach a pre-shaped flake, an innovation that required foresight, precision, and planning. Far from being clumsy or random, these tools were functionally diverse and served specific tasks related to hunting, butchering, hide preparation, woodworking, and possibly even symbolic purposes. In particular, scrapers made up a significant percentage of the tool assemblage, indicating an emphasis on hide working, a critical task for clothing and shelter, especially in cold Ice Age environments. The variety of retouched flakes and backed knives also suggests a multi-purpose toolkit suitable for a wide range of survival strategies. The evidence confirms the high frequency of prepared core techniques and notes a considerable standardization across the assemblages, reinforcing the idea that these tools were not only functional but crafted with shared cultural knowledge. This level of uniformity suggests the presence of teaching, learning, and possibly even apprenticeship within Mousterian groups. Moreover, many of these tools exhibit signs of resharpening and prolonged use, indicating a level of curation and attachment that extends beyond mere disposability. Some tools may have been repurposed or kept for their symbolic value, an idea supported by later discoveries across Europe, including engraved or incised bones. 
The evidence from Le Moustier must be placed in a broader framework of Moustierian cognition and symbolic behavior. While the Le Moustier site itself has not produced incised artifacts, it is part of a constellation of Moustierian sites that collectively reveal a pattern of complex behavior. The Le Moustier site, with its combination of skeletal remains, burial evidence, and lithic technology, remains foundational to our understanding of Moustierian life. It demonstrates not only the physical adaptation of these humans to the Ice Age world of Europe, but also the emergence of behaviors once thought exclusive to Homo sapiens. The care of the dead, the standardization of complex tools, and possibly even a sense of symbolic identity. The Mousterian burial sites of Le Moustier and La Ferracie, both located in the Dordogne region of southwestern France, offer powerful insight into the mortuary practices and cognitive world of Mousterians during the Middle Paleolithic period. Though they are part of the same cultural and geographical context, they differ in scale, complexity, and the depth of symbolic behavior implied by their respective archaeological remains. Comparing the two provides an important window into how Mousterian burial traditions may have evolved over time and varied by community. Le Moustier is best known for two Mousterian individuals, an adolescent male known as Le Moustier I and a neonate, Le Moustier II, discovered later in a shallow burial pit. Le Moustier II's burial is particularly important as it suggests deliberate interment. The infant was placed in a flexed position in a scoop-shaped depression carved into the cave floor. Although no grave goods or clear symbolic artifacts accompanied the body, the act of burying an infant indicates emotional bonds and possibly spiritual or symbolic beliefs within the group. The burial likely occurred around 50,000 years ago, placing it just before the final stages of Mousterian presence in Europe. In contrast, La Ferrasi presents a much broader and more structured mortuary record. The site contains at least eight Mousterian individuals of various ages, including two adult males, two adult females, several children, and even a fetus, or neonate. These remains were discovered in carefully dug pits, often oriented in the same direction, and with bodies placed in consistent flexed positions. In one striking case, a stone slab was found covering the skull of a buried child, which some researchers interpret as a deliberate symbolic gesture. While the evidence for grave goods at La Ferracie is minimal, traces of ochre, stone tools and burial layering suggest a more elaborate and possibly repeated use of the shelter as a kind of cemetery. The differences between the sites are telling. Le Moustier's burials, while deliberate, appear more isolated or limited in ritual complexity. La Ferracie, on the other hand, reflects a more advanced funerary tradition, possibly involving repeated rituals and shared beliefs about death and the dead. The presence of infants, children and adults in both sites suggests a communal understanding of personhood and social roles that extended to all age groups, even those who could not contribute materially to the group. Taken together, Le Moustier and La Ferracie demonstrate that Mousterion were capable of more than survival. They showed compassion, memory and perhaps spiritual imagination. While Le Moustier represents an early or simpler form of burial behavior, La Ferracie reveals a more structured and possibly symbolic mortuary tradition. These sites, rather than contradicting one another, suggest an evolving and regionally varied Mousterian culture. The growing evidence for such behavior continues to challenge outdated views of Mousterians as primitive brutes, replacing them with a more accurate image of thoughtful, socially complex humans capable of honoring their dead. Critically, the discoveries at Le Moustier have helped dispel the myth of the Mousterian as a primitive brute. The adolescent skull, with its relatively gracile features, reminds us of Mousterian youth and development. The burial of the neonate suggests familial bonds and emotional depth. The tools speak to innovation and planning. In combining these elements, the site offers a powerful counter-narrative to outdated views of Mousterians as evolutionary dead ends. Instead, the humans of Le Moustier emerge as resourceful, intelligent, socially complex beings who adapted to challenging environments with ingenuity and care. Their legacy, encased in the stone tools and silent bones beneath the rock shelter, is now recognized as a central chapter in the broader story of human evolution. A chapter rich with meaning, 
skill, and perhaps even a sense of self. In conclusion, the Le Moustier site stands not only as an archaeological landmark, but as a monument to a once misunderstood people. Its buried children, fractured skulls, and finely made tools continue to speak across the millennia, telling us that the Mousterians were far more like us than we ever dared to believe. As new discoveries continue to shed light on their symbolic behavior, from burial rites to incised bones across Europe, the world glimpsed through Le Moustier grows ever richer, ever more human. Thank you for watching and please leave comment, a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.